Pangaea was a supercontinent that existed for about 100 million years before fracturing apart 200 million years ago and moving slowly into the current continental configuration. This is what the world would look like had that land mass stayed intact. This gem demonstrates that all time zones of the world must converge, and happen to do so longitudinally on Antarctica. However, UTC or Coordinated Universal Time refers to, no time zone, so those areas in red are actually sort of a generic, Antarctica time. This map, which includes only the arcs made in air travel routes, demonstrates the beautiful world connectedness that flight has enabled. This is what happens when you plot over a century of earthquake data, with the magnitude of the earthquakes dictating the brightness of the coloration on the map, you get an incredible image of Earth's tectonic plate boundaries in glowing relief. Fun fact, 1898, was also the year Tesla claimed to have unveiled a version of his oscillator that caused an earthquake in New York, later earning the device the nickname, Tesla's Earthquake Machine. Breaking from the long-held convention of orienting north as up, established by Ptolemy, 90 to 168 AD, and resulting from the majority of cartography taking place in the northern hemisphere, this world map seems turned on its head, by orienting south as up. Fun fact, evidently in the Middle Ages, cartographers routinely fixed east as up, to orient. Another map that seems to challenge convention and distort the planet, this West Up Mercator projection, the cylindrical style world maps invented by Gerardus Mercator in 1569 and possibly the most common type of map ever, centered on Greenland instead of Europe is no more or less accurate than the world maps you're used to seeing. While not a real map in the sense that it doesn't depict reality, this interesting shift illustrates what the world would look like if land was ocean and ocean was land.